Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? My thumbs are a-twitching because today we are going to take a look at Google's new keyboard for mobile devices. It's called Gboard. Now in iOS, it's pretty darn good, but in Android, it's great. Why is that? I will show you today on Dotto Tech. One of the kind of cool aspects of our mobile device is the fact we can install custom keyboards on our mobile devices to use in a variety of different purposes. Now, Google noticed that one of the things that we do an awful lot is we go out of whatever app we're typing in, be it a texting app or our email, to go into search to find something that we want to refer to in whatever it is that we're saying. So we're texting a friend, we say, let's meet at, oh, just a minute, go into Google search, look up the address for the place, go back into the texting app and send it. You know, you copy and paste and send it. So they thought, stroke of genius, what if we build search into the keyboard and the Gboard was formed? Now, I'm gonna tell you straight up, Gboard is not equal in both operating systems in my humble opinion. In iOS, it's good. In Android, it's great, and I will show you why. But before we begin, let's show you how you go about actually installing the Gboard, because that's the first thing that you have to do, especially in iOS. It's a little bit of a process. You download the app, and then when you open the app, they give you this set of directions. Open the settings, go to general, go to tap on keyboard. You have to do all of these sorts of things in order to properly set up the keyboard uh, in order to give the operating system permission. So that's exactly what we're gonna, we're gonna do right now. We go into the general settings, and in general settings, you will find keyboards. You go into keyboards, and then what we actually have to do is we have, first of all, have to install, and then we have to enable the keyboard. It's a multi-step process, but once it's done, we are good to go. And at that point there, we have the keyboard ready to use. Now, how you go about actually texting with the keyboard is, uh, is or, or working with the keyboard is you first of all have to open an app that's keyboard enabled so here I've got my texting app open and you see we've got a little the kind of the world icon down there at the bottom that allows us to select the different keyboards that are installed so we, if we tap on that once at a time we will work our way through them or we can simply press and hold on it and we can select right from here whichever keyboard we want now when we bring up the Google keyboard, we will see that we've got the, that little G button there right inside the keyboard. So if I'm texting to somebody saying, let's meet at Earl's, which is a restaurant chain here in Vancouver. They should sponsor this particular segment, I think. Let's meet at, okay, are you ready? Now I hit the G, which brings up Google search. And I can type in, you can, you can set it up to allow it to search your contacts if you're gonna look for people or search the history. But I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna type in Earl's and it uses Google search, right? If I tap on search, it uses Google search to bring up the search results. And yes, that's exactly what I want to Earl's Kitchen and Bar in Richmond. So when I tap on that, do you see how it auto-populates the information from the web page or from the search. So it brings all of that information in. And if I'm happy with that, I can just hit send. And now I've just sent a map location and all the information, contact information to the person who we're meeting for lunch. This search, it, it saves you multiple keystrokes, jumping in, jumping out, copying and pasting, which is always awkward on your phone, don't you think? Now, the app itself is actually fairly robust. When we go into the app, uh, they've got kind of a setup dial, a uh, setup menu here for the, uh, for, the, for the keyboard itself. So you can go into the different settings and it first of all, walks you through the actual physical setup, but you can choose multiple languages. You can choose different keyboard settings so you can have auto correction and capitalization on you can have uh, using emojis and it also has something called glide typing which is where you slide your finger back and forth and it predictively recognizes the pattern that you're sliding for uh, which is quite popular I think it used to be called sw there was a swipe keyboard uh, that really speeds up the typing if you happen to like using glide typing so it's the first I think it's the first iOS keyboard that I've seen it with. I quite like it. It used to be available, but it hasn't been available for a long time. And, oh, and you can also set up different themes, which is kind of fun. So you can set up different themes, so you can have the black or the white keyboard, or you can have these different colored backgrounds and that sort of stuff. And while I'm into it, the search settings allows you to choose whether you're gonna do con search your own contact database, that sort of stuff. And if you're gonna turn on or off location access, of course, location access makes it that much more efficient for searching in your area, knowing where you are, but it also uses up your battery life an awful lot more quickly. So that is it on the iOS device. And I think you'll agree, it's pretty good on iOS. What about an Android? 
Well, in Android, we're talking about a whole different kettle of fish. Why are we talking about a whole different kettle of fish? Because one of the things that Android or that iOS blocks keyboards from having access to is Siri, the voice and dictation recognition side, which I use all the time. I hate typing. I love dictating into my keyboard. When you use this keyboard in uh, Android, look at this. You have access. Let me compose an email. Just a minute. Compose the email. When you use this keyboard in Android, you have access to the microphone. So you can actually dictate into it as well. So I'm just going to send this uh, from me to, I'm going to send it to me as well, to one of my other email addresses. Subject is stuff. So first thing that we notice <clears throat> is here on the right hand side of the keyboard, I have access to the keyboard, which I appreciate big time. I love having access to the keyboard. Once that's done, I'm ready to finish off the search part of this email. So now I tap on the search. And once again, I type in Earl's Kitchen and it does the same search. Here it brings up slightly different looking results, but effectively this exact same results. And I'm able to put the search results in and add them into the email that I'm sending or the text that I was sending using the keyboard. All keyboards aren't created equal. Some are better, some are worse. As far as I'm concerned, this Google search keyboard in Android it serves the best of both worlds. It saves us jumping in and out of the keyboard in order to do search, gives us access to dictation. In iOS, it still gives us access to all of the search features. Losing dictation though, so I'm kind of on the fence as far as iOS is concerned. It's called Gboard. Installing it on your iOS or Android is just that easy. I hope you found this video today to be useful. And I got two favors to ask of you. First of all, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And while you're at it, give us a thumbs up or a like. Also, please subscribe to our newsletter. That way you can learn about all of our upcoming events, tutorials, and trainings. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.